In the studio is professional goalie extraordinaire Mike McKenna. Yeah. Extraordinaire. Uh, extraordinaire. Huh? Well, I mean, you've been on, we were trying to count how many teams you've been on. Way too many. <laughs> Do you know, like, how many teams have you played for for the NHL? Uh, well, NHL, I've played for seven. Uh, I've dressed for nine. So I've got a couple yeah. in there that I just wore the jersey, sat on the bench, you know, opened the door, yeah, wore the backup towel. That counts, uh, though. That right? counts. Because yeah, you're officially sure, yeah, yeah. In, the, in the stat sheet. I got a paycheck from it, too. There so you, that go. Really there you go. You know, but yeah, I mean, so nine teams NHL, played seven. And then, man, like you go through American League and ECHL, man, I think it's like 22 so total or something like Holy that. Wait, smokes. so what, what are the nine ago? NHL teams you've been on? Ooh. Okay. I know, I know. Yeah, yeah. You're, I'm not looking at it. You can look at the database. Uh, let's see. So I'll start it off. I, I guess I guess four earlier, and I was pretty proud of that. Well, that might have been this year alone. This year is three. <laughs> in, uh, a month. in a month. <laughs> yeah, well, in three days. Wow. I went from town to town, and I never left the Eastern Time Zone, and I went through three different teams, which Three is teams in three wow. days. Wow. Yeah. Three days. But uh, so, yeah, I started off, first team was Tampa Bay Lightning, uh -huh. New Jersey Devils, uh -huh. Columbus Blue Jackets, Arizona Coyotes. Dallas Stars, uh -huh. Ottawa Senators, uh -huh. Vancouver Canucks, Philadelphia Flyers, and Florida Panthers were in there, too, for a brief stint. Oh, all right, there you go. That's so, nine. That's nine. Yeah. Wow. So you are a current flyer, though? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. currently you are a flyer. I completed my tour this year within the Flyers organization, and I, I actually went back to the American Hockey League for the last month and a half or two months maybe of the season. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I was with, with the Senators for two months, the Canucks for two days, and the Flyers for two months this well, year. I so. think even off the air, we talked about did we, we may have even mentioned this on the air. Following you on social media and your wife on social media, when you got traded to Vancouver and then immediately got traded to Philadelphia, you guys had made it to, did you get to Vancouver? Well, so, okay, so what happened here was that I was playing for Ottawa at the time and I took morning skate with them. Uh huh. And I got pulled out of the lunchroom and told I was traded to the team down the hallway. And Ottawa gave me a trash bag and sent me down the oh. hallway to the Canucks. I've always wondered what? how that. So, wow. Yeah, so here's your personal <laughs> possessions. Like in a, boy in a, style? Here's your personal possessions in a hefty bag. So I went down the hallway. I joined my new friends with the Canucks for two days. Yeah, hey, guys. Yeah, you know, and. I'm really, the new goalie. Yeah, so really what happened, though, <laughs> is that my wife showed up in Ottawa. They'd been in Belleville, Ontario, where I started the year in the American Hockey League. Jeez. And so they're living there on their own for two months. And it, it was starting to kind of get old at that point. And so they were going to come in for. I don't know, I think we had six, eight days over what was going to be the holiday break where my kid was out of school, my mm -hmm. oldest daughter's in kindergarten. So we were all booked into the hotel. I just moved us in, and we got one night together, and then bang, traded. Ugh. And so like the whole afternoon, I'm, I get back, and first I have to explain that I've been traded, and I don't know where I'm going or what's going to happen here. Yeah. So I ba I'm in hockey purgatory for who knows how much longer. And then I had to pack everything up in the room and try to dress a game that night. So it, it was mayhem, man. And you know what? And that's another thing to think about. Through all this chaos, by the way, he still has to play hockey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if I got you know tossed I mean? into that game, I don't know how that would have gone. Like, my head was spinning. You know, I'm okay. lucky I got out there for warm-ups. And I'm wearing gear that is completely mismatched. It looks like a moron on the ice with yeah, when Ottawa you, gear with a Vancouver jersey. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah, when you get when you get to a new team, I guess that, I mean, you're, it's immediately thrown right in. Yeah. And you're not, I guess they don't, they're not fully prepared for you and just kind of mishmash of equipment and yeah they do the best they can like when you're a goalie you got to wear your own stuff because it all has to be approved by the league and so like i have my signature the guy from the nhl that approves everything for my size oh, there you are so, with vancouver with oh mismatch, isn't, that, isn't that beautiful with mismatch <laughs> tony i tony look like Pol the biggest munson in the world right there <laughs> so tony you should, I mean, you, should, you should see when i got to philly so i look like a road cone in philly because they covered my gear with this stuff called pad wrap uh-huh so th this set of pads that was black red and white suddenly became black and orange in a big hurry and I had like matte black tape on my mask to cover up the paint job. So you had so it's it's black, red and white pads. The, Vancouver, I mean I'm sorry, Ottawa colors. Yeah. And you went in yeah. the Vancouver jersey. It could have yeah. been anything further. And your skates say Nordiques and yeah. something about the <laughs> You know what, though? The that, that mask is kind of <laughs> badass. You know, I got a lot of good feedback on that. I was considering oh, just like, running that's like, flat black. Whoa, that's just that that's cool. like Almost yeah, evil. that's a murdered out SUV. <laughs> well, so, yeah. so your your flyers mask straight black with the with the flyer kind of logo that's, on the side. And that was just tape on it. So then I got a real one. So like the gear doesn't fall out of trees, right? They gotta make it. And it takes two, three weeks for it to show up sometimes. Uh -huh. So I just like at that point I ordered all white equipment so that I could just kind of fit in wherever I ended up. But mm -hmm. I did get a proper flyers mask painted. And that you can do that in like a week. So that happens pretty quickly. What's so you went to uh did you go to Kirkwood? I, I didn't go. I actually went to Parkway South. Parkway South. Yeah, I played my youth hockey at Kirkwood, though, because mm -hmm. uh, that falls within district for it, right? So I played 
clear through, I guess, 15 years old in town playing for Kirkwood and then two years at Parkway mm-hmm. South. Because when you walk into the Kirkwood Ice Rink, there's a there's a display case right when you walk in, and one of your jerseys is in the display case next to Ben Bishop's. Yeah, they've got a sh- kind of a shrine to all the guys that have made yeah. it. Uh, Chris Butler's on the list there, uh-huh. too, you know, but myself, Bishop. Uh, and it's really cool because my grandpa's in there, too, with a picture, and he kind of helps start hockey mm-hmm. at Kirkwood. So it's, it's a yeah. cool little story. What you just glossed over is a cool little story. Uh, and I think there's a little, there's something about it hanging up there, too, right? The story yeah, about right, him? Yeah, right outside the referee's room. Yeah. Like my I just gran- like to look at pictures. I don't. Yeah, I read, we don't read, we don't read. I like picture I books a lot. Yeah. <laughs> my so my grandpa and like I don't know ten other guys in town more or less started hockey in the city 50s mm-hmm. 60s. They'd drive two hours to Springfield Illinois just to find a rink that had boards. Like they'd skate at Steinberg and Clayton, but there were no boards. And by that point, it started to roll forward, and it turned into more guys wanting to play, and rinks started to pop up. And then the Blues came, and it, it changed everything. Yeah. Right? So it's just it's really cool when you think about what we've done in this city, how many NHL players we've mm-hmm. produced now. Like Brandon Bullock won a Stanley Cup. Like we're on the map, you know. Like this is a hockey destination now. Yeah. If my grandpa had any idea at this, he'd just be. That's amazing. He'd be rolling over. So before be the Blues great. got to town, before the Blues were the St. Louis Blues, even a thing. Your grandpa was was trying to get the the hockey thing started here. Yeah, I mean, they we started off here with the St. Louis Flyers, 40s or 50s, I think, and then it turned into the St. Louis Braves, which was the affiliate of the Chicago Blackhawks. Mm-hmm. And so which yeah, there's how St. Louis got a team through the being affiliated of the Blackhawks. That's right. right. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of history in town with it. Yeah. So was your grandfather a goalie? Oh, he was way too smart for that. <laughs> no, no way, man. He made a good life decision. No, he, I, uh, I don't even know whether he played forward or defense, but he just enjoyed playing and then he actually transitioned into refereeing and he did that until really till the day he died i mean he was 76 when he passed and he was refereeing a week before it at, at what at what age do you like you know youth hockey what age do you go up oh, i'm gonna be a goalie and i'm sticking with this well it's, it's a point i'm gonna bring up because on my son's hockey teams everybody wants to be tarasenko and be a goal scorer mm-hmm. yeah. and usually for these for these you know youth leagues um you pay less if you're the goalie Oh yeah, oh, they'll get really? you. Like, yeah. Oh, if you're a beer league oh, goalie, sign me up. If you're a beer league goalie, you won't pay a cent, yeah. and they'll give you all the beer you want after the game. What about the pads, though? It costs so much money. Well, That's the yeah. reason because we we yeah, grew, I grew up next to Kirkwood. Those. My dad taught at Kirkwood, and I was always like, man, this Kirk, Kirkwood hockey thing is so huge. Let me play hockey, and he goes, can't afford it. We're teachers. <laughs> get out of your head. <laughs> and and in roller hockey, I played goalie. Like it was my favorite thing to have that kind of pressure on me, and I had the little Milek or whatever they were. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's right on. And yeah. th- those were all my pads, and I had all my favorite goalies' helmets, and that was my thing. And he was like, that's as far as you're getting. I'm yeah. not paying Enjoy for that. any of well, those yeah, so, pads. So for my son's spring league. It's if you if you if you are the goalie, you pay less money. Yeah, for the Get league. Out uh-huh. of here. Well, ben, you know, like I when we were tell kids, you something, Mike. I mean, from on. from our age group, I'm 36, right? So like yeah. we're in that similar age uh, demographic where you either wanted to be Brett Hull or you wanted to be Curtis Joseph. I wanted to be Joseph. Right. You know, and so like everybody who was in the net for the Blues was my hero. But mm-hmm. I'd also show up at games early because my dad's an off-ice official, which got me in the door for free at games, right. which was unbelievable. And so I'd watch the visiting goalie all the time. So it was the equipment that did it for me. But like you said, like it, people just gravitate to whoever the hot player is. Like Tarasenko, yeah. obviously you want to be a goal scorer. Brett Hull, when he was leading the league in scoring, that's what did it. And anybody listening that's from my age group, we know you know exactly what I mean with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, there's not a ton of kids going, I want to be John Casey when I grow up. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was equipment for me. I mean, there's a couple reasons. Sometimes you got an older brother that puts you in the net and shoots yeah. pucks at you because he's a you know, vindic- vindictive older brother. Right. That's for me, for me growing up, it was Patrick Waugh was the guy. He's who, man. Uh, yeah. I had a Felix Pop van and a Van, v- van, van Beesbrook. I had those, was, those yeah. masks. I, I had was, all my favorite goalie masks. I was a Ranger fan growing up. It was Mike Richter. Yeah. It was was the guy. Mm. I just did a, you know what, it's funny, I just did a podcast with a guy who ba- who made his pads, okay? Mike and, Richter's? Yeah, and so Richter had pads that were 14 inches wide at the boot, and you were only allowed to have 12, but they never checked anybody for legality back then, hmm. and this guy, for whatever reason, used to call it the bulbous boot. And I thought that was the funniest <laughs> term ever, I have no idea why. Anytime you can use bulbous in a sentence. Yeah, I, know. I mean, like, <laughs> talking about sports, especially. Yeah, yeah. Especially about sports. Yeah. But, uh, no, it, it's amazing the mindset of a goalie. It's almost like a, a relief pitcher or a, a kicker uh, in football. You guys think on an entirely different wavelength than everybody else. We're kind of on an island out there a little bit. You know, like we were on a, we're not at the bench during the game. We come for TV timeouts, some of us at least. Some of the guys just go off and do their thing, you mm-hmm. know. But it, it is. like, and, and I think that's why we can kind of, you know, correlate with, like, pitchers, quarterbacks, because it is such a isolated position, mm-hmm. and what we do is so different from everyone else on the ice. Well, and the other thing, the three that you just mentioned, all have to have short memories, too. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Because if you're the losing goalie the next game, like, you know, Bennington is right now, you just have to forget what just happened. No, Bennington has been, is the winning goalie. No, I know. What I'm saying, if you're the goalie like Bennington is now, if you have a loss, you can't carry that to the next game is what I'm saying. Just like a closer yeah. in baseball. Is well, you know, we were talking about Bennington the other day, how he's he's got an interesting personality. We, we say you got to plug him in because he's like a robot. Um, he's kind of deadpan when it comes to pretty much everything. Really doesn't show emotion. And I guess he's just locked. I, is that just being locked in? Could be. I, you never know with guys. Sometimes guys put off a complete front in public, too, just to give that persona. Uh-huh. And some, I mean, some guys, it's truly who they are. You never know what it's like. I mean, for myself, I always played my best when I was really loose and outgoing and talking with my teammates. And then you get these other guys that get in, and they just don't want to talk to anybody, period. Leave uh-huh. them on an island, like, get away from me, you know, and it's just, it's different. It's like everybody has a different personality and whatever works for them can be totally different from someone else. Mm -hmm. I mean, Moon, like when you're going on stage, probably people do different things to get ready to get on stage, right? It's kind of similar. I I get in some weird zone and when people usually approach me, they get the wrong impression as if I'm upset or um, a D word or something, you know, like a lot of times you just get into a zone. And when, when, when I was when I would do sports and play goalie, whether it was soccer or roller hockey or something, there is like this zone that goalies get into right before the game. But it doesn't mean you're always yeah. robotic. For me, it's always just when the puck drops. Like when the puck drops, I'm like laser focus mm. on it, you know. And then the moment that whistle blows, it's like mentally relaxed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just it'll kill you. If do you, you wait for to. that first shot? Like once oh, you, once the first shot is out of the way, once the first save is made. It's you're hoping for a floater from the blue line right in your stomach. You know, just uh-huh. an absolute muffin. Like, that's the best way to start a game <laughs> off. Because the worst thing you want to see is, like, a two-on-one bearing down on you right off the bat. And you haven't touched the puck And yet. you haven't yeah. touched oh, it. You know, like, you got your token warm-up shots where your teammates are buzzing the tower. And, yeah. Yeah, it's nice to be able to ease into a little bit, but... The reality of it, man, is you got to be ready no matter what. Do you say to yourself, here we go? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's actually like kind of my phrase when it's like, oh, here we go again. Here we go. Let's let's go. (laughs) It's always like, I always try to remind myself when I do is like, come on, Mike, you've only done this 5,000 times before, you know? like. Well, it's like the first one's out of the way. Now we could could play hockey. And and one save at a time is always kind of a a word or phrase that people use. And it's really true. I mean, you just, you can't think too far ahead or too far. You don't think in the past at all. You're just thinking about that next one save to make and... You know, so much of it goes into it like that. It's, it, but you just play really. Like it becomes instinctive after a long time. For for the little kids, you know, who want to be on the blues when they get older. What what when did you start? Uh, I was five. Five years old. Yeah, but that was really early, man. Like, if you're playing hockey by nine or ten, that's fine. Mm-hmm. If you have any, but like I never dreamed of even playing pro. Like I just played the game because I loved it. And it just kind of all organically happened for me to make it from to the next level. And it just kept going, you know. And at, I think at, most what, imp- at what point did you go, hey, man, I'm gonna, I can get paid to play hockey? I think I was probably in college by then, so 18. So, like, I made it to junior when I was 16. I left home at 16 in the winter. So I haven't done a winter in St. Louis in 20 years. No. And it's, it's half the it's, reason why I listen. It still sucks. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> I've, been in, I've been in New England, Portland, Maine, oh, Canada, yeah. But, yeah. Ottawa, yeah. But, like. That's half the reason why I listen to you, listen to the Ridge Show, though, when I'm gone, is it just gives me a connection to St. Louis. Oh, like, thank you. That's an honor, by the way. Thank you. Odd, cool. odd as it may be, hearing a traffic report just makes me smile. That's you know, amazing. Like, <laughs> so, oh, yeah, somebody wadded up on 270 on the north side. Oh, I've heard that one before. That's amazing. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it may not even be traffic. That could yeah. be a news story. You never know. Yeah, so I think by the time I got to college and then I was I got drafted after my freshman year, I was like, oh, man, like, this, this actually, this could happen. Like, like, what did you go to college for? Did you go to college for hockey and, like, let's see what happens? It was, it was both. I mean, they, that was the best place for me to play hockey, but I went to a school called St. Lawrence University in upstate New York that's only Division One in hockey. It's a mm-hmm. tiny school. And the moment I walked on campus, it just felt right. There's some you good know? players that have come out of there. Yeah, good players. A lot of good coaches, actually. Because um, yeah, I've heard of St. Lawrence. I mean, I know, like, everybody knows Mike Keenan and mm-hmm. <laughs> all everything that goes into it with him, but he was a St. Lawrence guy. Jacques Martin, who was a Stanley Cup winning coach. Um, Ray Shiro's a GM of the Devils. There's a lot of guys that have gone into management. Rich Peverly might be the player that you remember. He won a Stanley Cup with the Bruins a few years ago. But, yeah, there's a lot of hockey history there. Was it your dream as a kid to play for the Blues? Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I think that anybody that grows up here, and, and like, even as you go through your career, you still have that sentimental attachment to your hometown team. And and you're rooting for the Blues currently? Listen, Riz, I'll be honest. Like, that Dallas series, 
I was in the I was in the Dallas camp, and I'll tell you why. Because not this season, but the previous one, I played in that organization. Uh, everybody and just turned on you. Wow. So I played, <laughs> yeah, yes. every, the listeners just went. Makes sense. You I, my Twitter feed just probably went. It makes sense. Alienate all of St. Louis. The dude played with all, most of those guys. Two what? Two years ago? A year and a half ago? Yeah. So I mean, year, he played with all those guys. You know, a year ago, I spent a year and a, a month and a half with Dallas, with the Stars, mm-hmm. and the rest with the minor league team in Austin. And so those guys are my friends and teammates. You know, and I know some of the guys in the Blues. I spent a year in their organization years ago, but it's not as many, right? So who, who was the flopper? Who was the guy? Uh, oh, Asa gosh. Lindell. Lindell. Yeah, Lindell. You play with him? Oh, Jeff, you skewered that guy. I, saw, I heard <laughs> Donnie a little. Donnie bit. Fandango just roasted him endlessly the other How day. How did you man. not? Come on, you saw that. Guy's that. a great hockey player, but yeah, that was tough, man. And listen, <laughs> <that's>, <laughs> we we appreciate Ben Bishop being from 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 St. Louis, and I'm sure yeah. you know him very well. Yep, good. When uh, Perron kind of tapped him in the back. With the stick, it looked like it was shot, yeah. like somebody shot him. Yeah, I, I, he it's a little him more in the than a tabby. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give it a goalie defense and say that part of our body is not very well protected by equipment, but <laughs> that, that, that series had a lot of theatrics associated with it. It was with fantastic. It. It was and a St. Louis guy hockey. ended it, yep. Pat yeah. Maroon. Against yeah. a St. Louis guy, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, we all skate together in the summer, and that's – it's tough to see, but like, I, it's funny. Like the other day, I was picking up something in South City, and like, all the stuff for Pat Maroon around town, mm. like signs oh. on billboards. Way to go, Pat! You know, you walk in a bakery, and there's blues jerseys and logos with number seven on them, and you know, what a story! Like a guy who comes back to his home city so he can play in front of his son, yeah. and like, just awesome. You know, I like, saw him a couple of winters ago. It was before he joined the Blues, obviously doing stick and puck on a Friday at Kirkwood Rink. Yeah. And I guarantee you, you were, you've probably been there as well. Yeah. He was out there by himself as far as he didn't go with anybody, skating around. And I was just like, damn, I think that's Pat Maroon. Yep. I didn't have the balls to talk to him. But <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure it was I get him. that way, too. I'll, yeah. I'll tell you, I'll, and we got to take a break, and we'll come back with uh, with Mike McKenna. We'll, we'll do some sports and your headline hoosh after the break. But I, I'll tell you a story. I get, I get very nervous around athletes. Like, very I, – I told you what happened at my son's, mm-hmm. you know, yep. hockey games. Oh, and, yeah. And I was – devastatingly nervous around certain people. So I'll, I'll tell you after the break. Mike McKenna, Jeff Burton's hero uh-huh. from the uh, hey, Philadelphia Flyers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and about 21 other teams. And about 21. Well, currently, currently the, the Philadelphia Flyers. And a fellow sh- outdoorsman, too. We see him, I see him out on the trails every once in a while, too. You I see am, Jeff, like, hiding? I am a mountain biker. <laughs> oh, you yeah. are? Mike yeah. never sees Jeff, but Jeff sees you. That's all right, yeah. Time. Oh, you know what? I actually saw you, 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 you post about something not too long ago about <clears throat> when, when the trails are wet, don't ride your bikes through the tra- through the yeah. through like the, the puddles. Don't be a schmuck. You know, like is that a you, bad thing? I didn't know that was a bad it, thing. It, well, it is for the trails because like if it tears them up and you get all ruddy like that, when they dry, they dry ruddy yes, out, you're right? right? And so it's the same way like when the horses go out when it's wet on some of the trails, like at Greensfold or in other places, like they'll to, just like post hole it. Like the horses like go to, straight through it. I like to uh, splash. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> go find a. Now puddle. I see what you're saying. Go find a. <laughs> <laughs> You yeah, I did find my, one. You can hang out with my three-year-old. Yeah, it's a puddle. I'm I did find Ashley. one. Yeah. I tell you, so you got two daughters? I do. They're three and six years old. And yeah. it, it, it's tough for, you know, a guy who travels, you know, around from, from team to team and, you know, some stability. Um, what was the longest you've been with a team? Hmm. Uh, two years. Two years? Yeah. I and mean, it's kind of the way my career be- ended up being is I, I ended up being the layover guy. Mm-hmm. You know, because I wasn't ever anybody's prospect right out of college because I, I didn't sign an NHL contract right away. So I turned into being this kind of veteran guy who you'd pair with your young goalie to be his mentor. And, ah, nice. But I kept playing well enough that I kept getting contracts and moving up through it. And then I kind of fell into this number three role. So I, I'd come in for a year, mm-hmm. you know, be the, the number guy's three mentor, guy. be the number three. And then, OK, are there guys He's mentored him. Now he's good enough. You can move on. Thanks for your service. And so um, that's kind of what I've done. But, like, my kids are really resilient to it, and they're, it's kind of they're just a reality, right? Mm-hmm. They've walked into so many locker rooms and made friends. And mm-hmm. my oldest daughter's been in three kindergartens this year, which we did not expect yeah. in any way, wow. you know. Like, she's in kindergarten here in St. Louis now, which is great. But she just keeps making friends, and she keeps getting invited to birthday parties. So, I mean, <laughs> I'm assuming things are going pretty well. You well, know, yeah. if, if little Caleb wants Kenlin to show up, man, like, gotcha. she must with, be doing something right. With with Philly, so, th- I mean, you were, what, their eighth goalie I, of I mean, the season? I was deep in the order. Like, I was almost, like, off the batting order in baseball. I think well, I was seven, it, I think. Because so many people got hurt. So many yeah. goalies got hurt. 
Uh, and that's when they called you from Vancouver. Yeah, I got claimed off waivers because of injuries, basically. And that's, I've been really lucky in my career that I haven't, I never missed a game doing an injury. And that's just unheard of, right? I've done this my whole life and never missed one. And I've been, people have been telling me to knock on wood for yeah, years. Geez. And like, Damn. it just, I don't know why it's happened, but I know that's given me opportunities to keep playing and, and stay in the game that way. Because I believe when you got picked up by Philly, uh, the Blues were in town either, either the oh, next I've, day I witnessed or... Bennington's first start and shutout. I was on the bench for that one. Yeah, yeah it yeah, was yeah. in Philadelphia. So I saw that firsthand, and I thought, okay, this kid uh, has a nice game by the kid. Yeah, what, what And I didn't think a whole lot of it. Now look at what's going on. Yeah, what right? are your thoughts so, about Bennington? I mean, he's done a great job. Obviously, that goes without saying. Like, that's kind of a hot take you know hit right. the button but yeah. uh <laughs> oh, i got that button right. Right. It's all that's a hot take there it is. <laughs> <laughs> but no he's just a guy that does everything really well and like we've talked about his mentality and demeanor seems really really straight and, mm -hmm. and you know keeps it steady um, but when i watch him as a goalie myself i see that he's he doesn't overcommit to things he stays square um and like i say he's really just he's good at everything and he's he spent five years in the american league being a really good goaltender an all-star last season he won a championship in junior he just never got the right break and now that he has and he's run with it it just shows how many goalies out there that if they get the right chance what they can do here's the common misconception about him is he's not a young guy i mean I mean, yes, he's 25 years old. Compared to us, right? Compared to, you know? I mean, I'm 40, you're, you know, you're 36. He, right. He's a young guy. But as far as new players go, he's not a young you expect guy. expect him to be like 22 or something. Right. right. Well, or how old is Rob right. Thomas? He's 19. Uh, 19. He's like 42. He's special he's stop that. Town. Not that guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, given an opportunity, could, could you definitely take the whole fluke thing out? out of the equation now oh you know it's just beginner's luck or oh it's a fluke you know just wait till uh you know wait till you put some pressure on him I, he's facing pressure yeah and i i think you need to play 20 something games before you really start to see who you have as a goaltender and he's managed to keep it going the whole time and i think that's kind of been the thought process here is that is he going to hit a wall is the team going to hit a wall and they just haven't you know mm -hmm. yeah. until until just recently here like they you, know, you never know what will happen in playoffs you're playing the best teams in the in the game right now Right, you're not playing the 30th, 28th team anymore. Like it's good hockey at this point, and he just keeps standing up to it. Well, when the turnaround of your season, you could pinpoint to the goalie change, and and him coming in. That's that's, well, that's something to say. Every single year, we always say one of the reasons or one of the ways you can get through the playoffs if you're not the best team left is through a hot goalie. And that's literally what's happening right now with the team. Yeah, I, but I, I'd be hesitant to put it all on a goaltender though. Too, I mean, they had a coaching change that obviously seems to have oh, fired yeah. him up. You sure. know, and people don't put enough emphasis on what coaches can do. Look at what Barry Trotz has done in Long Island this year for the Islanders. Like mm -hmm. they went from the worst goals uh, against in the league Brooklyn. to the best. So they play in Brooklyn now. Uh, sometimes they split it between there and Nassau. <laughs> you know, but. Uh, Nassau, call that the Nassau Mausoleum. Nassau was my first NHL game. And the Nassau was, Mausoleum? Yeah, I got tossed in midway through. There was about 7,000 fans there because it was in a snowstorm. <laughs> but that was my first game. I what was year was that? Stands, 2008, maybe. Yeah. I was, like, you don't even sit on the bench because the arena is so small there. Yeah. You're in the corner. Wow. So the other, goalie, the other goalie, Kari Ramo, allows three quick ones. And I see our head coach, Rick Tockett. I'm playing with the Lightning. And I see him looking over the crowd at me. And if you could picture him waving over the crowd like this... <laughs> People are, that are to watching the stream can see me. It's like, get in here. Come on. And so, yeah, okay, I'm getting on the ice. I guess I'm going to make my NHL debut. That was it. In Long Island. In Long Island. Long Island. <laughs> in Long Island. Wow. Uh, any, do you have any weird superstitions? No, I try to stay away from it. I don't oh, believe man. in those. I, I think they're a waste of time and mental energy. Do you know of any other goalies that have oh, some kind of weird quirks? I mean, it's goalies uh, yeah. mostly, isn't it? Man. In hockey? That's what I'm you saying. You know, I, th yeah. I think it's just because we get labeled as being the the weird dudes on their own on their own, you know, page. But yeah. I've seen players have some weird ones, too. Yeah. Like we well, had a guy. Would you say this 50% of the team probably is very, very superstitious? For sure, man. I played with a guy that would take a Gatorade bottle every period and take, like, two sips out of it and then build a mound of bubble gum on top of it, run his hands through his, hands through his hair the entire time, and then go back, touch the bubble gum again, put his gear on, and go out on the ice. <laughs> he had to do that. And that was like tip of the iceberg. Like, I mean, you talk about freakish. That's just is that, weird. Is that somebody we would know, but you just don't want to say his name? No, or this is the superstition obviously not work very well. I'll say, we I mean, his name is Jonathan Racine. He's played one NHL game, and I've played with him in a couple cities. And 
nice kid and everything, but man, he had some wacky superstitions, and everybody knew it too. And we're just looking at this guy going, "Come on, man, you just can't be." <laughs> it's not first off, working. you're just wasting Gatorade. Which yeah. bubble gum. That, that annoys hey, me in gum. the first place because I'm the guy who will like put things in a recycle, save it and put it in a recycle bin myself, uh-huh. you know. Yeah. And then the the mound of bubble gum though, and like we're talking like two three inches high. Oh my And God. I don't know how that starts. I don't know how you become that Yo. guy that's mounding bubble gum. Yeah, where does that start? I don't know, man. Deep seated. Who else? Come on, let's name know. names. Come on, let's name names. Oh, superstitions. Oh. Let's name names. It's, I want to hear. I want some some dirty things. Come on, man. It's dirty easier. To, it's easier to think of crazy things that happen in the miners than it is weird superstitions. <laughs> I mean, I was on a bus that caught fire. You know, like oh yeah, holy cow. Yeah, that was a good one. Uh, it seems like there's good. a lot of habits that people can confuse for superstitions too. A lot of goalies, you know, like. Stick to, stick to the post twice over here, once over here. Don't touch this line, all that kind of stuff. I mean, you guys all have your quirks, but right. are they superstitious well, or habit-driven? I think a lot of it is it becomes routine more than it is superstition. Um, and for me, like, it's good to have a routine, but it's when it takes over your mind to the extent that you can't do anything else that it's a problem, right? Mm-hmm. And, like, Patrick Waugh used to jump over the lines, and Ron Hextall would play the post before the game started. Yeah. And those were just kind of things that they did. And you really start to get worried, though, when people are so taken back by what they do that they have to put the skate on or else they're completely – they can't handle it in their mm-hmm. mind the rest mm-hmm. of the game, right? Like, it's um, – it's, it's fun to see, but it's also like you worry about some guys like that, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's why I worry about Jeff. I, I he's remember, got some weird things, too. Well, I remember hearing a, an interview with, with one of the professional baseball players, and I can't remember who it was, but it was one of the big names, and he was the guy that never touched the, the line when he, when he ran out onto the field. And somebody was like, man, that's a crazy superstition. He goes, it's not even a superstition. He goes, if I didn't do it, I wouldn't even notice. He goes, but I've been doing it since I was a kid playing baseball that – it just happens. It's just something that happens. So that's where it's not a superstition. But at the same time, he does it every game. So yeah. essentially, it is. Well, I'll, I'll tell you with the and, and before the break, I was mentioning how yeah, I get nervous around professional athletes. And uh, we're just people too, Riz. I, I, I'm just, you know, it's something about uh, there's people that'd be nervous in front of you guys, yeah, that's man. Dumb. Like that's, it's, our, it's the that's, radio that's, guys. That's my God. silly. It's something about having a natural talent at something. It's just to me, it's just. Amazing. Or to be in 51 and not having a talent that you can, you know what I mean? I was like, I look at him and go, he plays hockey so amazing. I wish I could do that something that well. I look at Moon and go, he does music so well. I wish I could well, do me one you thing. Go, wow, he's so handsome. Yes. <laughs> just a beautiful human being. <laughs> so, um, Patrico just completely left out of that conversation. No, no, I was going to get to him, but he, <laughs> he does right. his thing. He right. stopped. And there's me. Patrico. <laughs> And then, and not then, even a comment, man. Like professional I DJ, not a comment on it. I can't it. hype like that. Come on. I, I, listen, I'm used to this. It's all right. Stop, <laughs> Stop silly. You know I love stuff about you. Uh-huh. Probably. Uh-huh. So there were some 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 fathers whose kids played on you know what my son Sam on on his team, uh, and they were professional you know uh, hockey players, and I couldn't go up to them. Every game you'd sit there and go, should I? And then you don't, right? And I never did. But what keeps you from it? Is it nerves or you don't want to be that guy? I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to be that guy. Yeah, so, but it's different being that guy when they're your their kids, your kid and their kid are but right I saw, there. So so uh Marty Brodor's kid was was playing with, with my son, and uh I would see dads come up to him and try to talk hockey. And uh I go, man, I could see the eyes roll in the back of his head. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I think I think you have a different That's perspective a cool though too because of what you do as a job. Like you're very respectful True. of how to approach people that are in positions yeah, yeah. of celebrity, really, watch right? His, you know, That's watch a good his point. Kid. Yeah, I mean, like you could go up and talk to Marty about anything, and it'd be totally cool. And and guys will humor people with talking hockey and stuff. But you're right though, man. Like you do have those scenarios where you're just like, oh god, I don't want to talk hockey. It's the last thing I want. Yeah, to Yeah, let's right talk now. shop. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I'm here to watch my kid, but and I, I don't want to. Bo- you know, I, I always feel like I'm imposing. I don't want. I don't want to bother him. Yeah. He's here to watch his kid. I don't want to. But uh, they do have like a um, uh, a, a father uh, son like at the end of the season like scrimmage. So the parents play the kids. And uh, what's funny is, so my wife's a hockey player, so I sat with the moms up in the stands, and uh, <laughs> are you cheering them on? She also cut your grass, too, doesn't she? <laughs> no, that's your wife, that's your wife. Oh, oh wait, your that's my wife. Sorry, so no, my no, wife no. is skating around with the parents, and out comes the goalie, and it's Marty Brodeur as the goalie for the parents' team, and I'm like, man, this is the coolest thing. I hope my son realizes that the the greatest goalie of all time is is the goalie for the parent team, and what was cool is he let all the kids take penalty shots. Off him at the at the end of the game. That's real cool. And I was on the ice like a like big smile on my face with the 
with the, with the camera. I said, dude, you know how cool that was? He goes, ah, dude, it was, you know, so-and-so's dad. What? <laughs> So who, Rick, Ricky's dad? Ricky's dad, big deal. Was it different he didn't for you? stop any of us. Was it different for you, though, because you grew up as a Rangers fan? Yeah, right? I hated him. That's what I mean, right? Hated so you just, uh, this is really him. the real reason. It's not hated that you stand him. off. It's just, but, just this guy's played for the Devils. I can't be near this guy. Yeah. Riz is in the stands going, skate hard! <laughs> Shoot Run high! Him. Shoot high! <laughs> you ever heard of Eddie Jockerman? <laughs> Mike Richter. But as you know, as uh, you know, uh, as a kid, I hated him. But as, a, as an adult now, I'm like, Appreciating how good he was. Yeah. I was waiting for you to go. As a kid, I hated him. As an adult, I still hate him. No, that's yeah. not, that I would have told, nice told your son to become friends with his kid, spend the night, and get some silverware or something. <laughs> like steal the silverware. It's like it's like Home Alone when they try to take the uh, the diamond earring and then the nice silverware on the plane. Yeah, right? it's real sterling. Put it in your purse. Yeah. Put it in your purse. Your first, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's so funny. Like he didn't he didn't realize. He didn't realize. He didn't care. After the fact now? Yeah, he does he care? Still doesn't care. Okay. Still, still doesn't care. Yeah. Uh, Mike McKenna's here. Let's do some sports. And here's Mr. Tony Patrico with your sports. Oh, I got to hit the thing. And if this. Uh, don't screw this up, fatty. Sports brought to you by our friends at West County Auto Body, the best auto body repair facility in the country. After a huge goal from Robert Bortuzzo, the Blues picked up a huge win over the Sharks in San Jose in Game 2 to even up that series at a game apiece. Now Game 3 tonight at Enterprise Center. Defense has been huge for the Blues. Vince Dunn, Joel Edmondson, Alex Petrangelo, and Robert Bortuzzo combined for five points in Monday's win. Now, Mike, wow. do we have a shot here? Have we got a good shot at this, uh, this series? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's four teams left. You never know what's going to happen. Yep. 100%. Would you say the Blues and the Sharks are pretty evenly matched? Yeah, in some ways. I mean, the Sharks are really so potent offensively, uh, but the way the Blues have played defense coming into this series, it's it's an interesting dynamic between the two. But does it not seem like when the Blues defense breaks down, they break down? Yeah, and that's it's... obviously been the Achilles heel, man. Some catastrophic turnovers. Yep. If you want a little bit of, uh, of something to fire you up, nine yep. years ago today, Joe Thornton put David Perron out for 13 months with a cheap shot. Look Today's up the that. anniversary of that. Today's the anniversary of that. Wow! Never look forget. Up, look up that video. And look it, it is, up. It's it's one of the it's one it's it's the night night video where he goes to sleep. Oh yeah. And then Petrangelo, who is not the captain yet and looks like he's thirteen, beats the crap out of Logan Couture. Wow. Well, Jeff's got five fifteen ten tattooed on him. I never I knew do. why. Yeah, you guys want to see it? <laughs> I don't want to see Are it. You sure? I don't want to see it if it's there. No, too. it's right up, way up here. It's okay. Right never forget. I mean, <laughs> uh, puck drop tonight at 7 o'clock. Who was the Blues goalie that uh, used to, uh, old-timey goalie, that used to vomit before he would come out? That was Glenn Hall. Every game. I think it Every was game Glenn Hall. From now what was, I hear, it was... Stop it. Was he one of those guys that didn't wear a helmet? <laughs> he played without a mask, I think, almost his entire career. Could you, know, you imagine <laughs> playing one minute of NHL hockey without a mask? Not in today's game. No, no way. No man. chance. And it's not man. like they were going, eh. No, they were just like, come on, bring it like that. Yeah. Crazy. Uh, you don't you talk to throw up in a mask. No. That's true. <laughs> I know somebody that did. They threw up in a mask yeah, during a game? Yeah, yeah. In uh, juniors when Jake Allen was playing in the Memorial Cup Finals or something, puked everywhere in Lewiston. Right through his mask. Oh, oh did he go through the holes? Oh, man. <laughs> Yikes. It was, like, it was kind of like if you ever see one of those pumpkins that's puking seeds at Halloween yeah. time. Yeah. Oh, oh gross. Oh. I got a stomach bug. Stop oh. it. <laughs> Uh, last night in the uh, Eastern Conference Finals, the Boston Bruins won 2-1 to one over the Hurricanes. They're now up 3 to nothing in that series. Bruins can move on to the Stanley Cup Finals with a win on Thursday Disgusting. at 7 p.m. What happened to Carolina? Mm -hmm. they, they steamrolled everybody. Yep. Maybe they just they lost They met Boston. It. That's he, what happened. Probably just needed to keep doing the storm surge after games. Yep. Can yeah. you imagine Bacchus? And... Did they stop doing that during the playoffs? Yeah. What a bummer. I wish you imagine would Bacchus playing. Playing the Blues in the Stanley Cup Finals, I'm imagining it. How does it come out? You don't want to know. Oh man, who knows? Uh, the car's that good. <laughs> the Cardinals made a statement last night in the uh, series opener with the Braves. They picked up a 14 to three uh, win in grand fashion. Yadier Molina, Marcelo Ozuna, Colton Wong, and Dexter Fowler all went deep for the Cardinals. Yadi, Wong, Ozuna all had three RBI nights. Jack Flaherty picked up the win, and tonight the series continues at 6:20. Michael Walker gets the start, so good game for the Cardinals there. Last night in the NBA, Golden State Warriors without Kevin Durant picked up the 116 to 94 win over the Trailblazers. Tonight, Raptors and Bucks get their series started. 
started. Tip-off is at 7.30. Also note from the NBA, the draft lottery was last night. Everyone tuned in to see if the New York Knicks would be getting the number one pick and essentially sealing the deal for Zion Williamson. They were they had the best odds of getting the number one pick. Well, they I were mean, the by worst far. team in the league. Worst team in the league. And uh, that didn't happen. The Knicks actually <laughs> got the uh, number three pick, which is still good, but they did not get the number one overall pick, which went to the uh, New Orleans Pelicans. Top five, New Orleans, Memphis, Knicks, Lakers, worst and names. Cavs. Worst name. The Pelicans. Worst mascot for a team. The Pelicans? I got to be honest. I didn't even know that that was a team in the NBA. Shows how much of a basketball fan I, I didn't am. either. When you guys said that, it was a, a, a quiz you put me through. I thought you were still joking. The, the Pelicans? Was- yeah. Are, are the Washington Bullets still in it? No, they're not the Wizards. They're the Wizards. Mm. The Bullets are the Bullets too violent. Were, yeah, well, true yeah. story. Uh, by the way, that hit was, that it was nine years ago, but not today. Oh, uh, Supersonics are killing it. But against well, the your Sharks. your tattoo is wrong. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, he still has that date. We Damn. just don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, but, no, that 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 hit is nine years ago, but it's still gnarly. Mike, don't you think a basketball team, an NBA team in St. Louis would be would be fantastic? It's huge. Oh, I think, I think it would be I, huge. Uh, St. Louis would support any professional sport. We supported the Rams. I mean, look at the number of fans that showed up to the games. It can't really help what happened when it left, but... I don't know. I wasn't around, but we have an NBA championship here. St. Louis Hawks, bring them back. Yeah. Uh, Boston Red Sox pitcher Chris Sale, career high, 17 strikeouts last night. And he did it in seven innings, which is crazy. Unfortunately, he got pulled after 108 pitches in the seventh, but he became the first pitcher in Major League history to strike out 17 in start of uh, no more than seven innings. Since being called up after getting about eight gajillion home runs in the minors, everybody's everybody's been waiting for Vlad uh, Guerrero Jr. to hit his first Major League home run. And last night, he did just that and then some. Gone forever. Have a time to see you later. Not it. See you in hell, big boy. Uh, not it. Not it. Oh, not it. Accent. Are you sure that was his first one? That sounds familiar. Not it. All not right. it. Three. Two pitch. That's in the air. Straight away center field. Back goes Pilar at the wall. It's gone. It's gone. Oh, he's not being tased, by the way, while he's swinging. And he's not going to do it. High and deep. And gone. I think he's ready to go. And it's the last time I parked I behind right way. field. What was that? Was that, was, that, was that the wire they were sending over the, uh, no, the that news? Was, that was the tracker of how far it went. Oh my gosh. Uh, that first one, they, dead center field. Yeah, too by high. a lot. Too yeah. high. What do you mean too high? Uh, so, I don't know if you heard this story, but cops are looking into uh, the shooting at Indianapolis assistant coach uh, Parks Frazier's house. Eight different guys fired more. They, they think around 40 different shots into his house. Oh, my God. They pulled up. They kicked in the back door. They fired in the in the house. They shot all over the place. Why? No idea. Okay. Nobody knows. And uh, finally here, do you know uh, the name Nicholas Immisberger? Yeah, that's uh, uh, no, Carl Immisberger. Yeah. You don't know this that's guy. That's the guy Crestwood? that brought the donuts to the, hey, to the whalers. I, by the way, from Crestwood, right? You guys don't know this guy. <laughs> uh, he worked at uh, Tiger Woods Restaurant, Woods Jupiter, the Woods Jupiter. In Jupiter, Florida, and uh, his family is suing Tiger Woods, Tiger's girlfriend, and the restaurants. Uh, in the restaurant, why? Because he died in a car crash back in December. And when they did the autopsy, they found that he had a blood alcohol level of 0. 0.256. Oof, boy. Oh and they are saying that the bar overserved him because they knew he was an alcoholic and they knew he had a drinking problem and they knew that he went to multiple AA meetings, but they still served him booze and allowed him to leave. Now, Say what you will about that. That's the lawsuit. But what his lawyers are saying is pretty crazy. They are saying that the Woods management destroyed three hours worth of video from servers at the restaurant and basically saying that they have video of him drinking but don't have any video of him leaving. Like they have him sitting at the bar having a drink, and then the video ends, and then it's the next day. Oh, Kind of shady. So we'll see where this goes. video, yes. Usually we'll see what the we'll see what, the shady car- uh, yes. category. Yes, we'll see where, what happens there. Uh, sports brought to you by Amco Ranger Pest Control, protecting people and property from pests since 1965. I'm Patrico. Boom goes the dynamite on 105.7 The Point. Happy birthday, Riz. Hey, Riz. Happy birthday, man. Douche. All right, welcome back. So uh, Mike McKenna's here, St. Louis's own. Uh, a great moment, I think, it was the last year, or maybe it was earlier this year. Was uh, I don't know what team you were with then, but you ran into Carter Hutton. Yeah, 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 bud. Our buddy uh, Carter Hutton, when uh, kicking with Carter, when you guys were <laughs> were playing uh, <laughs> Buffalo, yeah. and you guys had a racial moment, I guess at center ice. We did. We bonded. Skated right up to him and go, man, Hutz, 
You were awesome on the Riz show. Like. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's great. Like, and can I, I knew him a little bit from playing against him in different places, yeah. and he actually played for UMass Lowell when I played for the Lowell Devils in the American League, and we shared a rink, and I'd see him there. But, like, I think I really caught him off guard because he, he was dumbfounded for a solid two seconds. And then he <laughs> if, like, he would have said, if he would have said who, I would have been so oh, disappointed. Yeah. If, he been said happy, if he would have said happy birthday, <laughs> that would have been, been, been devastated. Been great. Yeah. <laughs> somebody, so, I was talking about him uh, the other day with somebody. They said they loved Loved his stoner laugh because he laughed like he was a stoner. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the first moment with him, the first time we had him on the air, um, yeah, I, I like to test boundaries. So the first time we had him on the air, he said, <laughs> I, I said, uh, I said, where are you right now? He goes, I'm at practice. And I'm thinking, all right, he's the backup. I said, what are you doing? Opening and closing the door, oh, practicing. <laughs> and it was silence. And then he went, <laughs> <laughs> like, right, we're, we're good. Oh, we're good. He's going to run with us. We're good. <laughs> yeah, now you know which, which path to go now. Right. To that, yeah. I, I mean, that was very insulting. I, I get it. But, you know, just kind of testing the boundaries. Yeah, yeah. That, that'll happen. But he wound up, he wound up being awesome. Yeah. Um, so, Mike, is there going to be a next season for Mike McKenna? We'll see. I'm pragmatically saying I'm not sure. Um, not pragmatically, but look that, that up. up. Yeah, big words. <laughs> Give us all a minute. Honestly, man, fancy NHL words. After what? Hey, man, I, I didn't have know you were I Canadian. Have, I have a degree. I went to school. Uh, <laughs> but no, man, I, I'm looking at it like this: where I'm going to need assurances if I'm going to do this again. Really, mm -hmm. like I need a no trade clause. And that's a huge ask for a number three. It's probably never been given out before ever. Oh, it's not going to hurt to ask. But I mean, hey, why it's not like asking for, for an upgrade at the uh, at the hotel? It's not good. What are they going to laugh you out? No, they're just going to try and get you to get sucked into a timeshare meeting. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. What if Philly offers you a timeshare <laughs> in Boca? Tony tried to get an upgrade on a, on a hotel in Branson, and he now has a lease on three cars for some reason. I don't know how. <laughs> <laughs> you guys ever travel through Mexico and you have that happen the moment you get off the plane? Oh, yeah. And that's what oh, they tell yeah. you. Like, all the people at your travel agency are like, do not talk to those people. Uh -huh. Walk straight past Go them. Straight Don't past give them the time them. of day. Just keep walking mm -hmm. until you see your bus. Yeah. That's what they tell you. Because yeah. if you're in Cancun, you got to walk through an area where there's, like, all these different kiosks and, yeah. and people yeah. with clipboards. And you keep your head down and you just walk You scream, straight. no habla espanol. When, uh -huh. we went, when we went into the city, when we were in Cancun or wherever the hell we went for our honeymoon... Uh, some guy suckered us into walking into a jewelry store, and he's like, "This stone normally, twelve thousand American dollars. I give it to you for fifty-eight bucks." I'm like, <laughs> I'm like no, deal. no, cool. I'll take all of them. Now. <laughs> he's mark. like, and then he goes, "I play something for you," and he turned on Thunderstruck by ACDC. I'm like, okay, I'll give you fifteen showbiz coins. <laughs> That's the blood showbiz. diamond there, right? Yeah, right? Like, yeah. Well, we only had to thrill, kid, he'll kill three people out of Ghana to get this. Out. <laughs> you can have fifty-eight bucks. Yeah, yeah. So I, I hope you get. What you want. Well, because, damn it, you deserve it. I appreciate that. All I want is peace of mind, really, and just something that I know my kids are going to be able to live in one place, hopefully, yeah. for a while. Well, you know, with, with Cam, when, when Cam Jansen was retiring, he was one of those guys that was like, I was around for so long, and not as many teams as you, but you develop so many relationships where you can have a hockey life still in hockey after you retire, coaching, scouting, that sort of thing. Maybe. Well, yeah, you build up stock and a resume in the game. Yeah. I mean, I've done 14 years of pro. I did four years of college, two years of junior that's a lot of time, and the, the amount of connections I've made, and also because I've been the ultimate suitcase, I've met so many mm. people, right? Yeah. So I've got to, if I were to step away from the game, I do need to explore everything within it you first. Can be a coach? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want to add to maybe a... Uh, Coaching, though, man, it's just like You could be a radio you, guy. You sound very natural. I know you got a podcast now. I do. Uh, six Degrees with Mike McKenna. Thanks mm -hmm. for that lead-in. I appreciate got it. Got it. Um, <laughs> See what I did there, fellas? Yeah, it was nice. nice. Job, I'm interviewing a bunch of old goalies and... and guys that I've played with and things too. So if I could choose, yeah, media broadcasting, man, I love this stuff. I think it's so much fun. I had a radio show in college. I did Monday Night Metal for yeah. two hours a time, you know. And hmm. uh, But those jobs are hard to find, so you never know. And like like you mentioned, Cam Jansen, he's done an amazing job of leveraging what he did in the game to stay in it. And mm -hmm. so um, we'll Jamie, see what our, our buddy Jamie Rivers, same way. He's down the yeah. hall down on the hall ESPN. Now. Yeah. So speaking of that, if let's say it's media or let's say it's coaching, whatever it may be, if you could choose a city, since you've traveled so much, you know, you're from here, but you've had so much experience in different cities, is there one place that you really found that, man, this is such a good environment, I would love to raise my kiddos here and and work full-time here? Is that's, there is there a place? That's why I own a home in Manchester. Yeah, I love St. Louis, here. man. This is where I'd like to be. And well, I haven't been here for 20 winters, like I said. So if I could pick, this is the place for sure. I mean, I've well, played in places that I love. Like, yeah, yeah. I played in, I mean, Austin, unbelievable city, right? Dallas is nice. Tampa is nice. But, this but nobody, is still... nobody swept you off your feet like your home. 
this is it, man. This just has that gut feeling that this is where I belong. It's got everything that I like and want to do, whether it's the, you know. Tony, you could talk to Stillman, couldn't you? Get him a gig? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just talk well, to him. Uh, in between you, periods, I'm, while I'm, I'm hyping, I'll, I'll run you know, it up I've there. been in, in this city for 15 <laughs> years now. And, you know, I'm not from here originally, and this is one of those places where I said that. I'm like, man, this is a great place. I want to raise my kids here. Yeah, and you uh, said something about the sexiest uh, accent, like number you know, nine or something. I think it's it's was it Eureka, yeah. Missouri was the sexiest accent? I'll tell you, you what, right? every time my dad says Warsh, I know, <laughs> that, I know the women are coming. You know? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's uh, do a headline hoosh. Brought to you by Moritz Royce Jewelry, the exclusive jeweler of the Riz Show. All right, uh, let's go to Longwood, Florida. And I'll start by saying that in the ancient Olympics, uh, the athletes were totally naked. This guy's no Olympian. Uh, the cops got a call on uh, on Sunday night about a naked man in a park. And when they got there, they found a 29-year-old guy named Jordan Anderson, totally naked, and shooting hoops. Pull up his, his mugshot, by the way. One more time, his name? Jordan Anderson. Totally naked, shooting hoops. And according to the police report, when they asked him what he was doing, he said, quote, he was working on his basketball skills, and he feels playing naked enhances his skill level. Yeah. <laughs> I'm working on my skills. Look at this disaster. Is he falling oh, asleep? <laughs> no. How many times was he hit in the face? One too many dunks. <laughs> Look at this gremlin. Oh, uh, wow. He was arrested for indecent exposure, and was he drunk? You betcha. I don't, it doesn't. It doesn't, it doesn't say. say. But I all, mean. Right, all right, Jordan. I'm going to need you to look right here and also up here at the same time. Wow. You got it. His face is five shades of red. <laughs> it looks like a bad Photoshop job. That's like there's so many. There's like four different people in his face. <laughs> I think that's he also a guy needs some, right there. That's a guy, and there's a guy down. He there. also needs some Accutane. I think. There's four yeah. different people in his face. <laughs> <laughs> so you go from Longwood, Florida. Jordan Anderson. You are today's headline hooge. <laughs> You got a hold of that Forrest Whitaker weed. <laughs> <laughs> All 